ladies and gentlemen, if all has gone right and I actually haven't managed to fuck this up somehow, today should be July 2nd of 2021. Today is a very important day in my channel's history. Today marks the five-year anniversary of Everything Wrong with Steven Universe. Holy shit, I feel old. Oh my god. Five years since I've started this... We'll call it a train ride. We'll call it that. Not a train wreck. A train ride. Uh... It's definitely been a very interesting part of my life that uh, definitely has had its ups and downs, you know, had its good videos, had its videos that I wish never existed, had its uh, moments where I'm like, yeah, this is good, and have had its moments of, my God, what the fuck was I thinking? But before we go any further, I bet you guys are getting kind of sick of 1080p 60fps black screen by now, so... I figure for this this one, yeah. Sorry if this comes off a little rambly and disoriented. I'm doing this entirely without a script. Probably a bad idea, but whatever. I figure that for this one, we bring back an old friend for a bit. That brings back so many memories. You have no idea. Just the days of coming home from school, being so exhausted, coming up here firing this up just hanging out with people for a while while i play a game or in this case editing everything wrong with video this screen i'm proud of it like it looks a little goofy to me now especially since you can literally see garnet's legs clipping into the ground but i put a lot of work into this like i can just look at my dashboard here and it's like all right i put these up I have a bunch of clickables that are like make things visible and invisible. This is like I put stars in the sky. This is shooting stars in the sky, I believe. Yeah, all with the right transparency and everything. Got this strobe light in case I got any cool music happening. Got this snow for the winter months. I have the text. So I'm only going to put it up for a second, but I'm going to take it off for this. It's, it's a lot of work. And really, what this shows is that... uh. Wow, I put a lot of work into stuff that I care about if I really put the time into it. Because that's the first thing. Everything Wrong with Steven Universe was the series on my channel that I have put the most time and effort into. Like, before July 2nd of 2016, the day of fucking reckoning on this website, before that day came, what was I? I was some fucking 12, 13-year-old shithead that made Let's Plays of Super Mario Crossover and Sonic Adventure. I could barely get myself to stick to shit. I would constantly try a new idea, drop it, try another idea, drop it, drop it, drop it. It's just... Yeesh, I was terrible at the time, and it's like... I don't fully blame myself for it because I never had a consistent audience that was, like, disappointed at anything that I was dropping series left and right. But it still left a bad taste in my mouth because, like, I could never find anything that would stick. Then one faithful day in April when I was browsing through YouTube and looking at... I don't even remember what I was looking at. It might have been, like, video game stuff. I don't remember. It was a clip that came up in my recommendeds. And it was the scene, and it was a clip from, I think, the official Cartoon Network YouTube. There was a clip of that scene in Bubble Buddies where Steven and Connie were under the ocean, and Steven was like, oh, yeah, we can be friends, and saying about how uh, he could, uh, he saw her at the parade and all that, and, you know, that cool thing. And I was looking at that. I looked at it. I watched it. I was interested. And I'm like, wait a minute. I remember watching this. And yeah, the day that Steven Universe, like, I think the world premiere of Steven Universe, November 2013, I actually watched it because it was back when I was getting back from a, I think it was back, for, yeah, it was back when I got back from a campground I spent the summer and up to October at, and... I was on Cartoon Network a lot, and that was when I first, when I came back, that was when I first started seeing previews for the show, so I'm like, you know what, fine, I'll give it a try. Watch Gem Glow and fucking hated it. Drop that shit as quick as you can think. But, 
I did watch, before I did drop it, I did think I watched all the episodes up to Bubble Buddies. I remembered really liking Bubble Buddies, and it was that scene that was shown that day on YouTube that I looked at, and I'm like, hmm, this looks familiar. Oh, yeah, it's that scene from that one episode of the show that I liked years ago. I looked into it a little more, and I'm like, hmm. At this point, this show is up to two seasons, and a lot of them have Steven and Connie. I was really interested in the relationship between Steven and Connie at the time. Like, even back then, I was like, they could develop this into something, but the other episodes are so stupid. So I dropped it, but now that it's had two seasons under its belt, I'm like, hmm, I wonder if the show got any better. And in order to very slightly dip my toes in, I decided to only watch the episodes that had Steven and Connie in it. Even just Connie in it I watched. Just to see how their relationship unfolded. That means back to back I saw Bubble Buddies, Lion 2, Indirect Kiss. Winter Forecast was one that really stuck with me too. Uh, I don't remember if I watched Mirror Gem and Ocean Gem. If I did, I was probably very confused and afraid. Uh... <laughs> Because I had no context for anything that was happening. Well, Mirror Gem actually is more of a... It's not... You don't need as much context for it. So maybe I wouldn't have been... I don't remember, dude. I just watched all the Steven and Connie episodes up till season two. Steven's birthday was, of course, the last one I watched at the time. Because I think that was the last season two episode with Connie. Yeah, it was. Because then we were doing drill stuff. Uh... And I'm like, wow, okay, this relationship is going pretty good, except for an indirect kiss. And this was back before I kind of, my opinion on Steven's birthday turned a little bit. I really liked Steven's birthday at the time. And I was just like, you know what? Even just from these episodes, I'm liking this. It seems like the show really changed from what, like, I remember it being this annoying fucking mess back in season one. I'm like, you know what? I'll give it another shot. I'm going to watch all the episodes this time. This was up until, uh, this was up to the end of season two, mind you. This was before season three happened. So I did, you know, struggled through the earlier episodes. And then around Bubble Buddies, it got good. And then that last couple were eh. Steven the Sword Fighter to me was where it started getting good. And then from there on, when I watched, and especially when I saw Rose's Scabbard, I was hooked. That was it. I was like, this is it. This is the one. It's gotten so good. This is probably one of the best pieces of media I've ever seen. And it was just season fucking one. I could put aside all the weird shit from the early season one episodes. I watched it all the way through. I'm like, man, I'd never seen anything like it. Like, I was kind of way out of cartoons at this point. I was more of a YouTube person at that time. So I'm like, wow, this is like way different from any cartoon I've ever seen. So I'm thinking about it. I'm like, hmm, I should look for some Steven Universe content. And, you know, you had your usual roundtables. You had your usual uh, theory videos. You had your MK Atwoods, your meme channels. You had that sort of thing. I watched them. I enjoyed them. Had my own criticisms of some things, but this was more of a time I kept it to myself. And then I thought, hmm, Let's look for some criticism of Steven Universe because, you know, I was the kind of person that liked to, you know, look at both sides of the argument. And I know this; these videos are kind of later on, but there was the Robo Buddies critique. There was uh, ER's critique. I remember really liking that one, even though a lot of people didn't. And then I stumbled into the rabbit hole of everything wrong with videos. At the time, there were two main people that did everything wrong with videos. It was Maliminous and it was Source Master. And I watched a lot of both, and it was obvious I liked Source Masters better. Okay, no, no, no beef to Maliminous. I'm sure he's a great guy. I'm sure he's a, I don't know much about him. I'm sure he's a great guy behind the scenes. He just really liked to push his damn t-shirts too much. <laughs> well, how did it go? Uh, this video reaches 10,000 likes. I'll be giving away a free t-shirt. Some shit like that at the beginning of every video. And of course, he jumped around all over the place. His grammar wasn't very good. It was just, it was, it wasn't terrible. I just wasn't a big fan. I'm like, yeah, mm, it's not really for me. So then I watched Source Masters. Source Masters were good at the time. Gem Glow, his Gem Glow video is a little iffy too, but nowhere near as iffy as mine is. Uh, 
I ended up really liking the guy's videos. I subscribed to him. I followed what he was doing. And I then discovered, wait a minute. I think that I don't remember if this was the video he was stopped at at the time. But then I'm like, wait a minute. He stopped at Giant Woman. Interesting. And I thought, well, this is unfortunate. He stopped this series early when it had a lot of potential to grow into a good series of like genuine criticism towards the show that's a market that's not very tapped on yet. And then the smile, the eyes lit up. The smile happened. I can do this. Q two weeks of pain and misery. <laughs> Dude, when I tell you that I do not wish editing a video like Everything Wrong with Gem Glow in Movie Maker upon my worst enemies, I fucking mean it, dude. Movie Maker, for those that don't know, is so limited in what you can do. In Sony Vegas, you can drop text in, you can drop images in, you can drop whatever you want in in different layers like it's no big thing, no problem. Just make the new layer, drop it in, don't worry about it. So I can have the timer, I can have the sin counter, I can have subtitles, all that, it's fine. Just do it. Sony Vegas says just do it, go. Movie Maker, on the other hand, does not have a layering function, or at least it didn't at the time when I was trying to edit this monstrosity. So, you know, I watched the episode, wrote a script. I, of course, didn't know what downloading an episode was at the time, so I literally just, I, with my shitty 2016 laptop that was probably made in 2012, I opened the laggiest OBS instance you've ever seen, opened up the memory hog Google Chrome, opened up Kiss Cartoon, and just screen recorded the fucking screen with the episode. Laggy as shit. I hated it. I had to not do some sins because it was so the video footage was so laggy and so unviewable that I just couldn't show that footage. It was a mess. I did that. I threw that into Movie Maker. And of course, you know, no layering system. So you can't have more than one piece of text on screen at the same time. And you know, since you need a sin counter and since you need subtitles, that's kind of a problem. So what I ended up having to do, from what I can remember... What I ended up having to do was cut the episode up into chunk whatever I need, show the clip. I did have the sense to put timestamps in my notes. I did do that for my first time. Put the clip I needed, put the voice clip, the ding, clip, voice clip, ding, clip, voice clip, ding, with no text, anything. Do that first for the entire video. Save and render that. Put that video back into Movie Maker, sync up the sin counter, make a sin counter, sync it up to go up at every ding for the entire video, render that, <laughs> put that video back in Movie Maker, wait for the times where I'm talking, put the subtitles in for everything, save, render that, then divvy up an intro and outro somehow with the fucking grace of God, put that shit in, then render those, go back into Movie Maker, put the intro video, the actual video, the outro video, render that, there's my thumbnail, no, my... There's my video. I can't fucking talk. There's my video. That was the most exhausting, absolute, ridiculous editing process I had ever undergone at that time. I'm surprised I even it even came out as kind of watchable as it did. Do you want to know why that video was originally in a box? Well, that's because I didn't... Well, I don't think I didn't know what resolutions were at the time. But it's because in between one of the renders, I accidentally set it to the di a different resolution twice. So one video was in 4x3, the next was in 16x9, and then I took that 16x9 and made it 4x3 again. So it put it in a fucking box. I changed it twice somehow, and so the entire video is in a fucking box. It's a mess. It's a mess. And the thing is... I think I did the same thing for the other two videos I did in Movie Maker. It was 
fucked. It was fucked up, and I hated that uh, that happened. But I'm like, you know what? I spent two weeks on this video already. I cannot fix that without probably going back and trying to divvy it up again and mess with the subtitles more and mess with the sim counter more. And by that point, I was over it. Package it. Ship it to YouTube. It is what it is. And it went up. Didn't get much traction at first, but at the time I wasn't really doing this because I had a viewership behind it. I was just doing it because it was fun. Despite how much of a pain in the ass it was, I still had fun making it. It was just kind of annoying after a while. And then somehow I managed to shit out two videos with Movie Maker with that exact same process. I fuck knows how. <laughs> fuck knows how I was able to put up with that shit, but... I'm sorry if the mic is clipping, by the way. I tried to put a compressor on it, but it, mixed results it might be. Uh, and those other two videos, I did do them faster. I remember Together Breakfast took almost no time at all compared to Gem Glow. Because it was, I just had the process down to a science at that point. And so I get those three videos. And I'm like, you know what? Fuck this. I want layers. I want to be able to put text wherever I want. I want to be able to put a real timer down. I'm going to get a video editing program that is actually good. <laughs> so, I look online. Adobe Premiere is a, is a monthly price, so no thank you. I think this was before DaVinci Resolve, by the way. I don't remember. But I looked at Sony Vegas. I'm like, you know what? This could be what I need. I saw it was $600. I'm like, fuck that. <laughs> I, I, I got my friend Pirate Bay on speed dial. <laughs> And, you know, it was history. I got a, got a copy. It ran poorly on my computer. I didn't care. I had something that I could use that wasn't a pain in the ass. Cheeseburger backpack rolled around. And, yeah, yeah, I made it. <laughs> it was actually tolerable. Of course, though, I, of course, of course, didn't know about the whole disable resample thing. For those of you that don't know, on Sony Vegas, by default... An option for your video is enabled called Smart Resample. If you ever use Sony Vegas in any way, shape, or form, turn that option off immediately because for whatever reason, it takes that footage that you throw into it, does something with it. I don't remember the details. It makes it so fucking ghosty. I'll probably put an example on screen, like a frame by frame. It makes these ghosts appear where if any kind of motion happens on screen ever, it leaves behind this after image for the entire video. Imagine 30 of those after images a second. That was disgusting. And at the time, I didn't notice it. But later on, I'm like, why does these look weird? Why does this not look like it did when I was editing it? And then I eventually discovered that. And I'm like, why is that default? That's such a weird thing to have as default. So for probably most of season one, that's what all my videos look like. It looks like trash Terra garbage, but I got the videos out. The scripting was... Uh, oh. A lot of the first half of season one, I am not a big fan of how I did them. First of all, the goddamn microphone. I didn't get... This is not the microphone I used. This is a Blue Yeti Nano I'm using right now. The microphone that I had originally was a headset microphone, and I'm going to try to show you how it sounds real quick. This is probably an approximate estimate, approximated, of how that mic sounded. I have no idea what it sounds like. I have not tested this before. This is the headset mic from the headphones I have on right now. I'm sure it sounds dreadful, and I can already tell by the way that the thing, the audio previews bouncing that it's only one channel so i'm sure it sounds great uh <laughs> this is the microphone that i used for the first half of season one yeah um i don't think this would come off as acceptable audio quality what about you guys so that was the mic that i had until i think tiger millionaire that was i think that was when i upgraded to a blue snowball which is an all right mic it's like more mid-range than anything but it was weird but i'll i don't i don't think that's a topic for this video uh 
But other than just the mic quality, those first few episodes, man, holy shit. Gem Glow is no longer the worst everything wrong with I've made, in my opinion, but it is damn close. Fuck. <laughs> it is very apparent that I did not know what I was doing when I was writing that video. It's... I don't remember a lot of the jokes off the top of my head, but I was so awkward. I was so quiet. I didn't know how to deliver lines yet. I didn't know what voice, I didn't know how to act, like voice act, like over exaggerate sometimes that I did later. I didn't quite learn that art yet. It's just a mess. It really shows that it was my first time trying to do something like this. And it doesn't help that, I mean, I was a fucking squeaker, dude. My voice, Probably cracked so much just trying to record those lines. So I had to do so many retakes and some of the lines were probably to a point where I did them so many times that when I got an acceptable take, I was just like, fuck it. Voice cracks. See what I mean? I'm still getting it. Fuck it. I'm fuck it. It's acceptable. I'm moving on. I'm sick of doing this line, which is an, uh, an attitude you should never adopt when doing this line of stuff. Let me give you that little tip. Acceptable is never good enough. You need great quality. Just putting that out there. Uh, I guess it depends on the circumstances, but that's the standard I follow. That video is just a train wreck, dude. Not to mention the resolution problems, the fact that it's only 480p, the fact that some of the footage was still really laggy and I still used it, the fact that my voice quality was terrible, the fact that everything just looked like a blurry fucking mess. It's a I'm amazed people like that video. I'm amazed that helped me get an audience that video did because it was so shit. Of course, that doesn't compare to the terribleness that's that cheeseburger backpack video. Oh, my fucking God. That's not to say that I didn't, tr that I didn't have good ideas because that was, I think, my second collab with a school friend. I don't remember. Well, yeah, I think it was. So... She had lines. I had lines. She could have delivered hers better, but I'm not going to fault her because I wasn't really a very good coach. But, uh, man, <laughs> combined with the bad mic quality, combined with the fact that I didn't like the episode to begin with, combined with the fact that I screamed so hard that I'm pretty sure I hurt my throat and that was annoying as fuck. That is the worst video I've put out and everything wrong with, dude. Cheeseburger pack ba bad pack back. Cheeseburger pack back to me is so fucking unwatchable at this point that I'm amazed that people can still get enjoyment out of it. I've mainly, since then, I know the video, some of those videos have gotten blocked. I know I've wanted to get them back up. A part of me hasn't because I don't want that to be what what I don't want that to be someone's first impression of what I've do, done. Because wow, those videos are hot trash, hot garbo. And I wouldn't say that they got started to get good until around the middle of season one B is when they started to really pick up in quality and even then it was still iffy at times and there was still things i wish i could have done better but by the end of season 1b i'd gotten my act pretty much together and i'd pretty much been doing the best i could at that point and you know it took a little bit i remember specifically that by arcade mania I had jumped from 50 subs to 200, and at the time, 200 was big. Because keep in mind, I've at that point, I had been stuck at 50 subs from, I think, 2014 to that point, which was late 2016. So in that two years, I was stagnated at 50, could not move, and then suddenly I put out these 11 videos, and my sub count shoots up. Like, wow, okay, wait a minute. I'm doing something right. Let's keep doing that. And so that's exactly what I did. Let's Play videos kind of stopped. Video game stuff kind of stopped for a bit until I got the idea to stream stuff. And eventually... I don't remember which video this was. I'll have to look into it. That'll be a job for future me. It was, I think, before Ocean Gem, though. I don't remember. I did eventually get to 1,000 subs. That was huge for me. That was huge because I felt like I was finally in the big boy leagues. I was finally getting somewhere. You know, all this time, I'm like, man, I'm doing YouTube. It's, it's fun. It's just, I want to get somewhere, you know? I want to reach that point where my videos help somebody. My videos are like this 
thing that helps someone if they have a bad day, makes people laugh if they're otherwise depressed. You know, I had that dream. And that that sub goal was the indicator that I was finally getting somewhere and finally reaching that goal. And so I continued. I worked. I worked. I got I went hard on that series, dude. Hard on that series of videos. It was great. And here's something I remember specifically. I don't know if you guys remember this, but back when the human zoo arc was either, I think either after it got leaked or after it aired on TV, there was suddenly this huge influx of people that were it talking about Steven Universe again. And because I think it was the indirect kiss video, because I had uploaded it at just the right time, just the right circumstances, just the right relevancy with just the right amount of people watching, some magic YouTube algorithm pulled up pulled out its magic wand, waved that shit over that video, and boom! That shit blew up. And I remember in that week, or those couple weeks, I got a thousand or so subscribers in a week. That is how, that is probably the highest amount of growth that I would never see again until the movie came out. That was insanity how much I grew then. And I'm like, okay, season 1A is coming to an end. I have done almost 26 videos every week at this point for half a year, which was a complete, complete, complete foreign concept to me. Because this was back when I'd take months breaks and not say anything. <laughs> I'm like, I need a little bit of a break just so I don't feel burnt out. And so after Je Ocean Gem, I took a little break. I think it was a month or two later, I came back, kept doing them, kept doing them. It wasn't as frequent. My sub count just kept growing and growing and growing. It was, a, it was a good time. It was a good time. I would eventually get somewhere. And that continued on for quite a while. There was a point, because there was a point where school started like really ramping up and I needed to put a lot of focus on that. There was a point where I needed to put everything wrong with on the back burner so I could focus more on school stuff. And so that did stagnate my sub growth a bit. I remember I think I was stuck at 15 or 16, 16,000, maybe 17,000 for months on end because not only could I not really upload everything wrong with it, I was just streaming when I could to keep everyone occupied and entertained while I couldn't make those videos. But at the time, I was going through a kind of creative rut where I had these things going on in my mind and I was letting negative comments get to me too much where it was like, oh, your videos are shit. You only bitch and whine and complain and moan and you're nitpicking and your videos are shit and you're shit. You know, that sort of stuff. It never really bothered me that much until I was at that low point and that's when it really started digging into me. And I'm like, you know what? Maybe I need to make a change. Maybe I need to pump the brakes, slow down Speed Racer, not be as angry, even though I didn't really follow through on that, and just mellow out, chill out, give your criticisms in a more fair, respectful manner, and not just yell at things. I'd like to think I would still adopt that attitude today. When I continue, I'm, I will probably still adopt that attitude because I like being calm. I like being mellow. I like not having my throat hurt at the end of every recording session. So I mellowed out. Sub count didn't really change. And then the movie happened. There's a fun story to go along with that that I won't tell here. But at, let's just say that due to some circumstances... I was going to make an everything wrong with about the movie when it came out. A movie happened. I watched the movie. I really liked the movie, but it still had some shit that I could not understand that I was baffled by. And I'm like, good. This is good material. Take these fresh thoughts, write them down, and make a video on it now. The movie is relevant. The movie just came out, so everybody's talking about it. If you do this at just the right time frame, just like you did with Indirect Kiss, profit, dude. Profit. Profit. Although I wasn't really focused on profit, of course. That was just like profit in the sense of you will get your video watched. You know what I mean? Not actual money profit. You know what I mean?
So, I think it was just two weeks. I just spent... I still focused on school. I still did my school stuff. Well, yeah, this was when school was starting up, so it was still a little lenient. I'm like, sit down, buckle your fuckle, open up the movie, write a list, do your sins, and then after that, just work on the video. Video, video, video. Take breaks when you need to, eat, sleep, use the bathroom, whatever, but video, video, video. This is your chance. This is your moment. Because after this movie, there's not a guarantee that you will get a moment like this again. So you need to take advantage of it now. Do the movie. Do what you need to do. Make it the best shit that you can. And you hope it gets somewhere. Because that was my mindset. This was the one chance that I could possibly have to have an everything wrong with video be relevant at the time with an episode that had just come out and be introduced to a new audience that could potentially, you know, see my stuff since they're searching for movie shit. So in two weeks, I just sat down, made that video entirely. It was ready. I had to go through a few copyright disputes because, of course, it was a new movie. Movie just came out. All that shit. And when it was finally over with, it was two weeks, I released it. Within days of that Everything Wrong With video going out, it had reached the top page of Steven Universe movie searchings. I don't remember. I think it was near the top page. Thousands. Eventually, hundreds of thousands of people saw that video. The like to dislike ratio may look bad because it's like it's like 70 something percent. Maybe it's dipped to 60. I don't remember. It's blocked now, so I couldn't really like I could check, but I wouldn't be able to see what the specific percentage is. But I saw that as a good thing because that meant that there were more people with eyes on my content. And let me tell you, dude, if that first growth you thought was insane, Try 5,000 new subscribers in like a week and a half to two weeks to the point where I blew past my goal of getting 20,000 subs and it didn't even stop there. I kept fucking going. 21,000, 22,000, 23,000. Just kept growing every week. We were popping off. It was great. That was a great time. Maybe for the channel, for me mentally, it was kind of eh, eh, but we popped. We popped off that year. And as a little extra feature, that video, because I had done such a thorough job to make sure that video hasn't blocked, I had done a good enough job to that that video actually got ad revenue. That was rare for me. I could never, ever dodge copyright enough to the point that my videos could be monetized. That video, I did such a good job that it actually stayed monetized for months until it eventually got blocked and taken down, but I couldn't really do anything about that. But... The revenue that came from that video was so massive in comparison to everything else that I had ever gotten. I think one month I got like $600. That combined with an influx of donations that had come in around that time actually gave me enough money to be able to afford this beautiful computer that I'm recording this video on today. If it weren't for that video, if it weren't for everyone coming in to watch and support me at that time, if it weren't for the circumstances that the movie came in that led up to that, I would never, I would still be stuck with a clunker, terrible computer. You watching that video, you supporting me by watching that video and maybe not having ad block on, I don't remember how YouTube works, you doing that is basically what paid for this computer which has done so much for me ever since I got it. I can play a whole bunch of games now that I never could before. Sony Vegas and Photoshop run like a pretty much dream compared to what it ran like over there. Overall speed for everything was just faster, just in comparison. And while it does have some cooling issues, it does run a little hot at times if I run really intensive games on it. That's not enough to, for the computer to like be bad, in my opinion. This thing is a beauty, and I hope to have it for another like five years to come before I eventually have to upgrade it. And it's only because you guys watched the videos. 
It's only because you supported me in, in that time, you know what I mean? It motivated me. It's really like, wow, I can get somewhere with this. If this can pay for the computer, if this series can, you know, do this for me, why not? Keep it going. And then 2020 happened. That 2019 period was great. That, 20, that 2020 period, we don't talk about that 2020 period. I've already done all the talking about 2020 that I think I can handle in a lifetime. Thank you very much. And so, here we are. That year where I just wasn't on the channel didn't really help, like, you know, me, this video because it's like some things are now gray because I pretty much forgot a lot about everything wrong with. But those things still stick out. Five years, man. I was 14 when I started that Everything Wrong With series. Can you believe that? I'm 19 years old now. I was 14 when I started that shit. I was fucking still in... I was still, like, in the early teenage years. And here I am, a grown fucking adult, needing to go into the workforce. Can you fucking believe it? Five years... God, I still remember this room that, up oh, squeaky chair, this room that I'm in now that has just the computer and my game consoles and my games and everything in it, this used to be a bedroom. And I still remember it like it was yesterday. Where I'm sitting, there used to be a bed. I remember it like it was yesterday. Me sitting there on my laptop with Movie Maker open, trying to frantically put everything together since it didn't have layers. That feels like just yesterday I was doing that shit. And now to know how far that this series has come, to know how far the channel came, it was, it's definitely something. It's definitely something to think back on. With all the memories we've made, with all everything, it's just, it's nice. We rocked with the good. We kind of, quote unquote, tolerated the bad. Not really, but you know what I mean. And here we are, five years later. And it still doesn't even feel real that this series is five years old. Holy shit. Since then, Steven Universe came to an end. Steven Universe itself ended back in 2019. And then Steven Universe Future started. And then that ended in 2020. So Steven Universe, as far as we know, aside from the odd PSA here and there, it's over. As far as we know. Unless they get a revival series, in which case, holy fuck, I'm going to have my work cut out for me. Now we know where the definitive end is for this series will eventually be. I can't really do everything wrong with Steven Universe forever. I know all of you probably know that, but it just feels unreal now that even that five years later, we, have, we know where the end is going to eventually be. The rest of season three, season four, season five, and then future, and then that's it. It's done. Feels kind of unreal that when I started this, it's like, we weren't even in season three yet. Well, actually, no. At the time, we were in season three. But we were just barely in season three when I was making Gem Glow. We were just barely there. And now here we are at the end. I feel so fucking old. I don't want to dedicate this channel entirely to Steven Universe forever because that's just a recipe for algorithm repellent. <laughs> that's just a recipe for algorithm be gone. So... I want to try, I'm going to eventually, maybe when I get back into the swing of things and everything wrong with Steven Universe and all that, this is kind of going more into general channel plans at this point. When I eventually get back into the swing of things with everything wrong with, which I'm still working on, don't worry, I'm still trying, it's just kind of, I got my own mental challenges I got to get through before I can do that again and that I'm still going through. But it may be sooner rather than later now, who knows, again, Take that with a, inch, with a grain of salt because God knows change plans all... God knows plans change all the time. Why am I recording this so early? <laughs> anyway, as I was saying, whenever I can get that off the ground again, I want to try and branch out to do something else. I've kind of been tinkering with the idea of maybe doing Pokemon stuff. More specifically, Pokemon challenges, because I feel like I could bring something to the table that a lot of other YouTubers don't in that field. But we'll have to see, because before anything, I want to get the bread and butter of my channel going again, whenever that will be. It could be next month. It could be next year. 
It could be anything, depending on what life decides to throw at me next, you know what I mean? Summer is going to be busy for me, so I probably won't even be able to be at the computer much. But whenever I can, I will try to do something whenever I feel up to it. What that'll be, well, you will have to wait and see. I'm sure it won't be what you expect. Anyway, though, that's about it, so I don't ramble for another 15 minutes. Uh, thank you for listening. I really appreciate that you took the time to watch this all the way through. And, well, maybe jinxing it a little bit by saying this, but here's the five more years of everything wrong with. I hope it doesn't last for another five years, because that would mean I'm... Something's really going wrong in production, but here's to another five years. Four years, three, maybe, maybe, we'll see. We'll see how long it takes. But until then, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time with whatever I'm doing next. Bye-bye.